Hi, it's Dr. Fox, licensed psychologist in the state of Texas and expert in the area of personality disorders. And today we're going to talk about neglect and borderline personality disorder. Now, emotional neglect is a form of abuse. Many individuals with BPD and BPD traits have experienced various forms of neglect while they were growing up. This video is going to discuss neglect and how it plays into being a factor of BPD and how I work to lessen its negative impact of it with my clients. So if you enjoy this video, please like, share, and subscribe. That would be really great. Also leave any comments that you may have in the comment section. That's always awesome. So let's get started. First, let's talk about what neglect is. Now, neglect, particularly childhood neglect, is defined in many research studies as being an extreme failure to provide adequate food, clothing, shelter, and medical attention when you're a child. Now, however, neglect can also be emotional distance and failure to respond to emotional needs of the individual during development, right? So as a kid, you're not getting that emotional attention. You're not getting that emotional support. Now, research has found that early experience of neglect actually promotes deficits and self-regulation of emotion. And so this is, you know, sort of a state orientation, like you're in different situations, being able to manage your ability to control your emotions, which together is with depression and demanding circumstances lead to an increase in the risk of developing BPD and BPD traits during development. So as you're developing, we see that you're in different situations. You may experience depression, right? We know folks with BPD, BPD traits, they experience those, those fluctuations in mood, okay? They tend not to be very long, at most, probably a couple hours. But when you've experienced that emotional neglect, it's harder to develop those self-regulation skills. You may be asking yourself, what does emotional neglect feel like now that I'm an adult? So it can feel like a variety of things. It can be confusion about emotions, self-worth, self-image, expectations of self, others, the world around you, is also the ability to read and understand emotions in others. This can lead to confusion in understanding why you have trouble understanding the reason people do the things that they do, as well as how to regulate your own emotions, right? In the example that I just gave. Now in my clients, I see this leading to an unstable self-image, which is sort of that uncertainty as to who you are and what you believe, but also a challenge and difficulty in social situations and in developing friendships, but also in romantic relationships as well. Now having deficits doesn't mean you're trapped and you're stuck in it forever, right? The key is to build emotional intelligence skills. How do we build those emotional intelligence skills? And I see this area of deficit in a lot of my clients, those basic emotional intelligence skills. And it's not surprising because you grew up emotionally neglected. You weren't taught those early skills. So it's important that as adults that we learn those skills. And we're, we're going to go over some of that in just a second. Right? So the emotional intelligence skills, these tend to be lacking because you weren't, you weren't taught these skills growing up. Right? And now is the time to learn them. It's critical. You can learn them at any age and it can be super helpful. Okay, to overcome a lot of that old emotional neglect right, that you've experienced. Now, there are top three things that I work on with my clients, and you can do them too. The first one that we're going to talk about, this is respond instead of react to conflict. Okay, so during instances of conflict, emotional outbursts are feelings of like anger or common, real frustration. It's hard to self-regulate, right, which we talked about. Now, remind yourself to stay calm during stressful situations. Easy to say hard to do, right? But you don't have to make impulsive decisions that can lead to even bigger problems. And we see that a lot with folks that are on that, that BPD spectrum, that they tend to quickly engage in those situations, those stressful situations, and it explodes, right? But what they're doing is trying to contain and maintain the situation in many ways by blowing it up, there's a thought process that a lot of my, my clients experience, and may, maybe you do as well, is that if I blow it up, it'll end quicker, or I'll have some degree of control because there's a lot of comfort in chaos. As we get older, the chaos tends to have really severe consequences, losing jobs, losing relationships, uh, significant others, right? Losing love relationships, things like that. So there is a pretty serious consequence. So managing those situations and trying to maintain your emotional control is critical. So try to understand that in times of conflict, the goal is a resolution and make a conscious choice to focus on ensuring that your actions and words are aligned with that, with lessening 
the conflict, lessening the intensity of the situation. Now, another thing that's really critical is practice self-awareness. This is a skill like anything else. So be aware and intuitive. Easy to say, hard to do, but not impossible. Okay, so you want to be aware and intuitive. Be aware of your own emotions and how they can affect those around you. Now, on my website, there's a, a worksheet. It's called Emotional Exercise, Emotions Exercise. And it's really good. It can really help you identify your perceptive ability of different emotions. And a lot of folks with BPD do struggle with that. So it's really good to help you do that. And a lot of folks with BPD and those of us that are in the mental health field and everybody, we're all people watchers. We all like to watch people, right? People are really interesting. So if you're likely a people watcher, right, which a lot of us are, use these moments to pick up on other people's emotions and body language and use that information to enhance your communication skills. So as you're people watching, kind of play a game with yourself and say, okay, does that person look frustrated, stressed, nervous? You know, what are those things that you can learn about others' emotions, reading others' emotions? And I did a, a video uh, a while back on sort of this mind reading. And, you know, I'll, I'll put the link here for that. But I think that that's really helpful because I think that a lot of folks with, with BPD, that they've built up that skill, sort of being very intuitive and recognition of others in order as a survival instinct. But I think it is also important to recognize that those with BPD, those along the BPD spectrum, tend to skew negative as a protective factor as well. So we got to be aware of that, that we may tend to, to skew negative. Now, the next and last component of emotional intelligence that I'm going to talk about is taking critiques well. This is the hardest one, particularly if you have an unstable self-image. An important part of increasing your emotional intelligence is to be able to take critiques Hard to do, easy to say. Negative comments from someone else, regardless of who it is, doesn't mean that that's what you are. Doesn't mean that, okay? It's their opinion or viewpoint. That's up to you to take it. I don't care if it's your mom, dad, brother, sister, cousin, boss, lover, best friend, whoever it is. Doesn't matter. It's up to you to internalize that. You have the power to internalize that. Now, folks along the BPD spectrum, it's really hard for them to understand that and internalize that, but it's so, so important. It's also important to remember that your BPD lens will encourage you to lessen and ignore the positive and quickly accept and validate the negative. Instead of getting offended or defensive, take a few moments and try to understand where the critique is coming from. Maybe they're jealous of you. Maybe they're mean, maybe they're short-sighted. Maybe they're just a hurtful, hateful person. There are people out there like that, right? But take the critique for what it is. It's feedback. That gives you the power of choice to take that feedback or not. You can be a duck in the rain. That's something I do with a lot of my clients is teach them the skill of duck in the rain and let it roll off your back, right? That's something that I talk about in my workbook about sort of taking sort of those negative comments and critiques and things and letting it roll off your back. It empowers you with the choice. And some of us have this internal dialogue, right, that talks to us. And maybe it's, it's a voice from your past, or maybe it's someone who's in your past, or maybe it's a bunch of different people. And they're not voices like psychotic voices, but they're internalized scripts that we play out over and over again. Also called copy process is that we engage in these same behaviors over and over again based upon those internal scripts that are based on our previous experiences. So the most important thing is, is that we don't want to use it against yourself. Use it to learn about yourself and how you can potentially, potentially take this information and use it to make you stronger. That's what we want. Assess and balance it, but be on the lookout for that BPD lens. Remember that BPD lens is going to skew you to the negative. And I talk a lot about that in my workbook about maintaining that sense of control of that BPD lens. And that's so, so important. Because BPD is like this little thing that kind of swims in, inside of folks, you know, and it's very negative and it skews you because it's built up all this power over time. But if you can recognize it, you can deal with it, you can manage it, you can build these emotional intelligence skills that can help you to manage these situations, lessen the impact of neglect and give you a greater sense of control, which when you have a greater sense of control, you can connect to others much more effectively. And honestly, and genuinely, and you'll find that your relationships are much more satisfying. Doesn't mean they're going to be happy forever. There is no happy ever after. It'd be nice, but there isn't. But what's important, though, is to recognize that once you learn about yourself and you're able to take in information more genuinely and manage it better, 
that sense of neglect and loneliness and emptiness, you can mitigate it, you can lessen it. And being a duck in the rain is a critical way to do that, is a helpful way to do that. Call out your BPD lens, manage it, recognize it, and deal with it. You can do it. You can lessen the effect of early childhood neglect, current feelings of neglect and emptiness. You can do it. And I wish you all the best. I hope that you've enjoyed the video. Please like, share, and subscribe. Leave some comments. And thank you all very much. Be well and take care. Bye-bye.